But astral projection is real, and and shamans and Satanists and everybody else, this is what they use to get around. This is how they listen. This is how、mm. they listen. This is why it's important for us as Christians, never be afraid to call on the angels. Call on the angels. Something that people that are involved in New Age and they open themselves up to these interactions in in a lot more ways than people realize.、Um, and I know that you. In your previous life,、uh, not a not a、um, not a reincarnation thing, but before you met Jesus, before your life was changed, you were involved in that. And we, you talked earlier in, in our previous conversation that you were you knew about astral projection, and that's something that a lot of people just don't understand. I recently watched a YouTube video of a pastor friend of mine sharing that he does a lot of work in the Amazon jungle and rescuing children, and、um, he said that there was a shaman. That showed up in his bedroom and、uh, and only lasted a few seconds, but he recognized that person. Yeah, and、um, it's just definitely something that has made me want to ask questions. And I know that since I have you here, I'd like to I'd like to hear about that. And if there's a false, if there's a fake thing that the devil's using, then there's normally like God has a, a original design for something that has just been manipulated by the devil. So. Um, I just like to hear about your your understanding of、uh, astral projection and things like that. Well, the astral projection projection that you're talking about that shamans and witch doctors and medicine men they all go to the same place. They get their power from the second heaven. They get their power from the dragon.、Uh, it's an occult technique, and they they learn how to use it. They、um, we are forbidden to do that.、Um, People with familiar spirits sometimes will astral project. In my previous incarnation of a new age, I did astral project. Some people also call it lucid dreaming.、Um, as a Christian, I had several instances where I was lucid dreaming, and I shut it down. I just、mm-hmm. it, while I was lucid dreaming, I said, "Lord, if this isn't from you in Jesus' name, let's stop this right now." Just like that, gone. Just like that, gone.、Hmm. It's very pleasurable because you're flying, and you're you're flying through rooms and walls and everything else. Because we're we're spirit, soul, and body, and what leaves is your spirit. But that's not supposed to happen. Now, if God takes us out and shows us something, that's a whole different deal. I've been taken twice, but I was fully awake. I wasn't asleep, and I wasn't trying to do anything. The Lord、hmm. just took me once in that. In Revelation 19, where the armies of heaven are riding down with the rider on the white horse, that's Jesus. I was a brand new Christian. I had no idea where I was, what I was looking at, or anything else. And, and it's and it's Revelation 19, it,、mm-hmm. verbatim. You know, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is faithful and true. With justice he judges and make war. His eyes are like flaming fire. His his on his head is many crowns. He's Um, you know, and on and on, on, on it goes. I could do the rest of the thing. The armies of heaven rode with him on white horses. So I'm sec. I'm here for three seconds. Second one, I'm holding the horse. There's no, there's no bridle. There's no saddle. I'm on this horse. I don't like horses. So right away, I'm going. What am I doing here? I'm holding onto the horse's mane with both hands, and I'm riding like this, sort of leaning forward, holding the horse's mane, and I instantly got the feeling. You know, a lot happens in three seconds. Instantly got the feeling that this horse would never let me fall, and that I could communicate with him. That didn't happen, but all that、yeah. hit me. Second one, second two. I look to my left, and below me, in the distance, is the rider on the white horse. All the horses are staggered, so no matter where you are in this retinue, you can see the rider on the white horse, and it's. Not like this. It's not a flat plane like、mm. you would think of, because we're flying. The armies of heaven are stacked like a, like floors in an apartment building. One, two, three, four, and we're in a horseshoe shape, like this.、Mm. So we're in a horseshoe shape, right? And the rider on the white horse is here, and the armies of heaven, these dead center. We can all see him because all the horses are staggered. Because this is this is the deal. I'm up on the right flank, about eight eight rows back. So it's second one, second two, second three, 
And second three is I'm looking in front of me at the front row. There's some really big guys up there, really mm. big guys. They're not human as we would know it. And then I'm back and I'm going like, what was that? That's when the Lord takes us and does something. I'm not initiating it. I'm not looking for it. It's a gift. But the shaman, because first of all, to become a shaman, and I got this from a Navajo elder who became a pastor, and he was studying to become a shaman, studying to become a medicine man. And in order, in order to get the power, you have to kill a family member. That, mm. that's, how you, that's how you get the power. You have to kill oh, a family gosh. Yeah. And he couldn't do it. So he left the reservation, became a raging alcoholic, and then because he was trying, he couldn't deal with it. This is this is my this is it. This is what I'm. And he he became born again and spirit filled. He became a pastor, and I don't know whether he's still alive. What a wonderful man! What a wonderful testimony! Just filled with the peace of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord. I mean, he's a human like the rest of us, but you know, just just being with this guy was really really cool. So that was a. Uh, you know that's that's what shamans do to be to get the power. I mean, you, you you kill a family member in order to get the power. Now you're on the dark side. You know, you and the, and the power is there, and you come from the dark side. So this guy, you know, who's in the Amazon saw the witch doctor, or whatever. I had a shadow figure appear in our bedroom once, um, and I knew exactly what it was. I knew someone was astral projecting and coming into the house. I knew that. This mm. is probably before the fire, about six, seven years ago. And I immediately went to warfare, prayed against it, and, you know, just just did what I had to do. But astral projection is real, and, and shamans and Satanists and everybody else, this is what they use to get around. This is how they listen. This is how mm. they listen. This is why it's important for us as Christians, never be afraid to call on the angels, you know. The angels are ministering spirits under the command of those who will inherit, you know, are not are not angels ministering spirits sent to those, sent to those who will inherit salvation. That's us. Call the angels. You know, call the angels. We have the authority to call on the angels. Call on the angels. Angels, draw your sword and kick it. I'll, I'll tell you a story real quick. About, I don't know, about a month ago. Yeah, I know. Oh, you got too many stories here. But like about a month ago. I'm being hit. I mean, I'm really being hit. I'm being hit really hard. It's not the typical warfare. This is a this is a principality. How do I know that? Because I've had it one other time in Portugal while we were filming the Fatima films. Mm. And I got hit with a principality there. And let me tell you, nothing worked. I lay in bed at three o'clock in the morning in a fetal position going, I'm out of here, Lord. I'm gone. In the morning, wow. I can't do this film. I'm gone. Holy Spirit goes, trust the process. <laughs> Next morning, I'm, I'm interviewing this guy who's a philosopher and a historian, and I'm just, I'm punch drunk. What was well, your before the Christian era, before the Romans and the Greeks? Oh, the goddess Mora. She would appear as a beautiful woman. There's that Meniscus Monosai again. Appear as a beautiful woman, have her way with the men, seduce the men, and then turn into a serpent and eat them. Hello? And and he goes, he goes, yeah, and there's still serpent cults up in northern Portugal. I'm just going like, oh, my gosh. And people go, well, L.A., why would the Lord allow that? Read Ezekiel 8. You tell me. Why does the Lord allow Ezekiel to go in and see all the abominations and then write about that? Because this is, we need to understand what the enemy is up to. Anyway, so here's, the, here's the kicker with the angels. So about a month ago, maybe a little longer, I'm I'm really getting hit, and I and I realize this isn't normal warfare. You know, I can put on the armor, I can go through the whole. It's, nothing's working here again. It's and I and I just cry out to the Lord. I said, I can't handle this. I need you to do something. Holy Spirit goes calling the angels. I'm just kind of going okay. So out loud, I say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to draw your swords and push the darkness away. John, I'm not exaggerating, and people go, LA, are you sure this happens? You know, were you on something? Maybe it was the pizza that you ate the night before. No, yeah. well, I'm being hit. I'm paralyzed. I called on the angels, and, and, I, and I mean overwhelmingly. It was the, you know, the darkness, just the, just like, oh my gosh. The moment I let, let that out of my mouth, one, two, bam, gone, just like that. The oppression gone out of here, and the peace wow. of the Lord came over me. And I just sat there with my jaw on the ground. 
That's never happened before. I mean, it was it was astounding how quickly they pushed back the darkness. And I, it's another sign to me that we're in the latter days. I mean, this stuff is heating up in warfare. So when we call on the angels, remember, we have all authority. We have the authority to tread on scorpions and snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. We have the authority and nothing will harm us. We just have to use it. And one, one of our tools is to call on the angels. Yeah, we definitely need to do that. And that's something that uh, maybe we can have another conversation about sometime is calling on the angels. Because um, I'm always looking for another opportunity to connect with you. And I'm glad that we did about this this alien hoax, as we're calling it, as we're, we're pretty certain that this is a hoax in in Mexico. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's really interesting to see all these opportunities for deception to arise and all these opportunities for things to be um, – counterfeiting what's real so that whenever the real comes, we don't, we don't take it for the value and uh, for what it really is. So that we'll be exactly easily right. deceived or overlook it. And so LA as, as we're wrapping up here, um, I know you've got a new film that's coming out. Um, I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about that uh, as we wrap up here. We're the only Christian ministry that has six films regarding the UAP UFO phenomenon. Um, they're all available. You can go to our streaming site, Instant Gratification, streaming.lamarzulli.net, streaming.lamarzulli.net. Just download all six of them and binge watch them and get up to speed. Trust me, you will get up to speed if you watch it. The latest one, or you can go to our website and order the DVDs, lamarzulli.net. But this is the darkest film I've ever worked on. It's called Cat Mutilation, Calling Card of Darkness. That's exactly what it is. And at the very end of the film, when I do the close, I look at the camera and I say, you know, there's no happy ending here, folks. There's no, there's no feel good moment. There's no release. It is you, we are, we are in, it's a, it's a private tour in the hell's kitchen. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we sync up the, the gr grisly phenomena of the cattle mutilations and we link it back into the abduction phenomena and then into Daniel 243. I'll send you I'll send you a private link, John, when we're done. Um, it, it's not for the faint of heart. You don't want to show it to your kids for sure. I would I would say, in fact, you know, we, we put a, a warning in front of the film. It, it's it's for you need to get prayed up before you and I'm not this is not hype. You need to get prayed up before you watch it and get prayed up afterwards. And if if it's too much to watch it the first time, turn it off, wait a day, get prayed up and continue the film. And I've had people, you know, email me and go, you know, you said all this and I kind of poo pooed it until I started to watch it. And now I get it. It's mm. very disturbing. It's a very and it's not like this, you know, a graphic thing, a hyper. We're not hyping anything. We're just delving into the phenomena for what it is. And at the end of the film, and we may be the only the only people that have actually linked it all together back into the breeding program. And what what we discover, what what you'll see, I'm not going to give it away. But at the end of the film, we put a you know tie it all together, link it all together. It's very disturbing, extremely disturbing, mm. um, and it links back into the seed war. It always goes back into the seed war. It ties into the prophecies it, it, in Daniel and what Jesus says, days of Noah. It, it's all it's all part of the thing. So that's number six. Number seven and eight are on Roswell 1, Roswell 2. I'll tease your audience with this. It's a completely different film in the Academy of Relation. We went to the debris field, hmm. metal detectors, and we found something there. And that's that's all I'll say. When When did you find something? As we were there about, I don't know, two months ago now, two and a half months wow. ago. And yeah, okay. right the end, end of June. And we so, found so this. So this has got to be something that people really need to need to uh, get a hold of, of your of your website and the materials that you have and be on the lookout for that. So, uh, L.A., I just appreciate you being willing to take the time to talk with me about all these things that are unexplainable by the by the human uh by the human understanding, but we can understand these things through the through the Holy Spirit, yep. and to know that we have power over the darkness. Yes, we do. You Absolutely. know, as you called on those angels uh, to to push back that darkness, that principality, 
we don't have to be afraid of these things, um, these apparitions that happen or those, these crazy things that, that you're hearing about in the news. You do, not have, you do not have to be afraid of it. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is living inside of you. And we, we can ask the angels <laughs> to, to, we can command the angels to do what God has commanded them to do, which is to protect us and to help us. Amen. So, Amen. LA, thank you so much for, for you, being John. here today on Charisma News. My pleasure. Thank you.